it is likely the helicopter will land near the dip site to hook up the bucket. Secure any loose items for prop and rotor wash. Wear eye protection. Aircraft will reload hot or while running. It will be very loud. Use your protection. An ideal site is flat, a 75-foot clearance radius. Clear of debris or blowing dirt and sand. Keep public traffic clear and be alert to livestock in the area. Never approach from behind. Stay away from the tail rotor. Always get clear communication from the pilot to approach from the front. Keep in mind that everything is spinning and at a high rate of speed. So you've got your main rotor blade up above and you have your tail rotor in the back. Those are your main areas of danger. Always access it from the front. Always make eye contact with the pilot. Don't ever approach the machine until you've been instructed to do so by hand signals. Plus the exhaust temperature is 1200 degrees. If you're anywhere in this neighborhood, you're gonna get burned or you're gonna get chopped up. So don't ever approach from the back. Don't ever approach from any anything behind the pilot's view from a, from nine o'clock to three o'clock. Um, if you come up to the right hand side or you're going to get inside the machine, you always gotta remember to keep your head down. This is as low as the gator blade is going to get to your head, but it's always good to, to remember to duck and when entering the machine, make sure you put your head inside the machine first. Don't stand up inside the cockpit or the day will end poorly for everyone. So um, same thing on the exit, turn, slide out, don't stand up. And the helicopter offers water to areas with limited access. While hovering, the bucket can pinpoint drops on hot spots. While flying, water can be released in a trailing drop. Filling the bucket takes minutes, making the turn around between drops quicker depending on your water source. Here's a handy bucket that we use. Uh, we can dip out of ponds or other, other water sources. So this particular bucket holds about 110 to 120 gallons. Uh, usually when we're doing the dip, we would like to have at least 10 foot of water just to make sure that we don't catch anything, you know, any snags, any underground debris, sticks, algae, you know. We want to keep the inside of that bucket as clean as we can. There's a series of cables in there that, that charge the mechanism, the release door, and so we don't want to get it gummed up or, or stuck in any way, shape, or form. The bucket is connected to the helicopter's cargo hook by a synthetic long line. This allows drops to be more concentrated while limiting fire spread due to rotor wash. In case of an emergency, the pilot has a manual and electronic option to drop the line and bucket. Always remember this and stay clear of flight paths. Make sure pilots are aware of aerial hazards in your local area. If you see something, say something. We take off and the bucket looks like it's not flying right or it's twisted or something like that. Even even if it if you're not sure, just make the make it known to us. Because sometimes they, they can get twisted up or caught on something and some damage caused to it. There's a certain way that it is supposed to fly under the wind and if it's if there's some damage to it or something is caught on it, it may it may be damaged to where it, it's not gonna work or drop the water correctly. If you've been around the machine all day and it, it sounds one way all day long and then the last load of the day or two loads out, hey, that sounds different than the last time. Please make the pilot aware of that. There could be something going wrong with the machine, and when you're inside the machine, sometimes it's hard to tell. Could have some transmission problems or tail rotor damage, or if, if you can hear it on the outside, those little tiny changes, sometimes that, that could be a clue that maybe there's something wrong, we should shut down and take a look at it. In case of an emergency, wait for rotors to stop spinning before approaching the aircraft. Enter the aircraft by opening or breaking the door. So if something happens, you need to get us out. All it is is a quick pull on that seat belt and everything comes apart and we're out. The emergency fuel shutoff is a red, round knob located on the left side of the control panel in front of the pilot. To shut off the fuel, pull it out. The battery cutoff is a toggle switch located below the fuel shutoff. Toggle down to shut off the electrical system. Let's review. Clear at least 75 feet for a landing zone. Get clear visual communication from the pilot. Look for water sources at least 10 feet deep and clear of debris. Pay attention to the surroundings. Let the pilot know if you see anything concerning. 
Refer to your pilot for any questions. If you see something, say something. Do not rush, stay aware. For more information on aviation safety and operations on wildland fires, visit i8t.gov.